WASI Integrated Science has three sections. That is the objectives, section B, and the practical section as well. So you are going to look at each of these sections and what's involved in every section. Okay, before I start, maybe you are expecting topics. Then on the topics, I will urge you to watch the video to the end because that is where I mentioned some topics. I mentioned certain topics which are most likely to be seen in almost every year. So with the objective test, the section B and the practicals, you always have the biology, your chemistry as well, your physics, the agric science, and then the information and communications technology. So with the objective test, we have 60 questions, including biology, chemistry, physics, agriculture, and then information communications technology. Now the questions, the number of questions range, but the section with the least number of questions is the information and communications technology. So for the objectives, you have questions on, um, you have questions asking you for certain things you've already read in your notes. But when it comes to the calculation, they are mostly on the physics and chemistry, but sometimes they do ask questions on agric. Now with agric, the questions are mostly the basic mathematics you know. They are not any challenging thing. So on the objective section also, you have to sometimes identify diagrams, devices, apparatus, organisms, and you have questions based on those diagrams you are seeing as you are preparing for the WASI integrated science exam you have that one in focus so with the section b you have six questions including biology chemistry agriculture and information communications technology as well the number of questions on the information and communication technology is reduced is the least now in the section b sometimes you are asked to define you are asked to explain you, are, you can be asked to draw you can be asked to describe an experiment and then calculations as well and mostly physics and then chemistry that's where the calculations are so on the section b side you are not asked to identify any diagrams or devices or apparatus that one is mostly reserved for the practicals so with the practicals it includes questions on biology chemistry physics agriculture and information communications and technology So you are supposed to answer all the four questions under the practical. So sometimes you are asked to identify diagrams. Not just identifying the diagram. The diagram is there with sub-questions under it. And sometimes you are also asked to label the parts of the diagram. Now, sometimes you have to measure the length of something or an object or a line in order to draw a graph. Or sometimes you have to read a volume and record and then use it to do a calculation now with the measurement of the length you have to use the meter rule and i'll show you the best way to use the meter rule in measuring the length of a line or an object and then the reading of the volume as well you need to read the volume from the bottom of the meniscus from the bottom of the meniscus you always use the bottom of the meniscus and i'll show you how to do that one as well now with a drawing of graph you are mostly asked to find the slope and the slope is actually a quantity so let's assume you you are plotting y against x so y which is your vertical and then x which is your horizontal now when you are finding the slope you always have your y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 so assuming your on your y-axis you have something in grams and then on your x-axis you have something in meter cube that you are finding density so that is the slope so you need to include the units of the slope as well and during the time of the graph nobody is going to give you a graph sheet if you realize that the question involves drawing of a graph you have to request for it and you have to note that calculations may be involved so let's look at how to read a meniscus so you realize that the eyes have to be right below the diagram now in the wasi integrated science exams you are not 
taken to the lab. So all you have to do is you need to put a meter rule below the meniscus and then trace it to the graduation. Then you read. So also with the meter rule, you always start from the zero mark. You always start with the, from the zero mark on your meter rules. Put your meter rule below the object you are supposed to measure its length. And then you look, you can see how you are supposed to read from the correct position. That's from the middle. Don't move too close to the left or move too close to the right to read the length or else you might get it wrong. So with the diagram over here, you realize that the actual length is 4.3 centimeters, not 4.2 centimeters or 4.4 centimeters. So there are certain topics to watch out for. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that you should ignore the other topics. The reason why I mention these topics is because they are mostly seen almost every year. So they are seen almost every year. So chemical compounds, naming of chemical compounds, balancing of chemical equations, as well as finding the mass number. Variation in genetics. So you should be able to explain what variation in genetics are. And mostly they do ask practical questions. They ask you, this one has, this individual has a particular genotype and this individual has a particular genotype. What is the probability that they are going to have a particular character? So you should be also, you should also be acquainted with how to draw the genetic diagram and to interpret your answer. So with organic chemistry, the functional groups, you should know alkenes, alkenes, alkynes, alkyl, alkanoids, you should know the substituents, you should be able to name them as well as very importantly, you should know the chemical properties of each of these subgroups of um, organic compounds I've mentioned. Now with electricity, you should be able to identify the devices the simple devices drawn you should also know the simple calculation in electricity ohm's law you know what resistance is you should know what um, potential difference is and you should know what current is as well and when the resistors are connected in series you should know how to calculate for the total resistance when they are connected in parallel you should know how to calculate for the total resistance as well and all other calculations associated with electricity so more concept in order to be able to do more concepts you should understand the chemical compounds very well you should also be able to calculate for molar mass molar concentration you should know how to do calculate for the dilution factor you should know how to balance equations as well and you should also know how to do more ratio very very important and in preparation of gases as well. You should know how certain gases are prepared, the reactants you need, and most importantly, as I mentioned, balancing of equations so that you'll be able to write the products formed, the uses of the gases, the chemical properties of the gases as well. You should know the setup so that you'll be able to label the parts. Now, these are general tips. General tips for every side so when drawing a graph you need to indicate the scale and the x and y axis now the x and y axis here doesn't necessarily mean the x and y axis but sometimes you are asked to plot a particular quantity on the vertical so you indicate there if it is length you are supposed to plot on the vertical you indicate it with this velocity you are supposed to indicate it and the y axis as well so topics involving graph include density, light energy, sound energy, heat energy, and then electricity. And there are more. You know, as you are studying these topics, you need to practice yourself. That is one thing about learning. If you don't practice, you can just look at it and think, I can do it. When you get there, because of um, a little pressure you might have, you might not be able to do the right thing. And one advice I always give to students is that always do your drawings at the last minute. Because there are certain questions you can just think through and just write. You can just retrieve the information from your mind. But with the graph, sometimes you need to do a little, a little bit of thinking. And as you are thinking and you've left certain questions behind, you'll be thinking and by the time you realize the time is gone and then you could have solved some one or two questions. 
So another thing about the graph, I'm very particular about the graph because it's very easy to get everything correct. And it's, as, as you know, it's, it's possible to also mess everything up. So use a 30 centimeter long rule to get a straight line. Now, when, when using the short rule, you draw a short line and then you want, you later want to add the next one. And as you are adding the next one, you might slant it without realizing it. So by the time you are done, your line is bent, but you'll not be able to see it unless you use a 30 centimeter rule. That's when you're going to get a very long straight line because your graph sheet is longer than the short rule. So when you use the long rule, it's possible or it's likely that you will get a straight line. After calculation also, that's, this is general. After calculation in mostly the section B, indicate the quantity, indicate, indicate the units of the quantity which was calculated for. After calculation, indicate the unit of the quantity which was calculated for. This could apply in section B as well as the practicals. For the section E, you have options to choose. So just look at it and then just choose the right answer. All drawings should be done with a pencil. All drawings should be done with a pencil. Now, sometimes you, have, you could be asked to draw a velocity time graph. With a velocity time graph, you don't need a graph sheet. You can just draw it in your answer booklet. And you should draw with a pencil. You could be asked to draw any figure. Draw with a pencil. And also on the graph sheet, everything done on the graph sheet, that is where you have your grid lines. Everything should be in pencil. From your scale to your x-axis to your y-axis to the point, everything should be in a pencil. Now, another thing also, most of the ICT questions are on devices. So take note of that. Most so far, most of the questions they ask are on, are on input devices, output devices, peripheral devices. And I remember one, one of the years they gave them a mouse. That's the practicals to identify and then give the use of a mouse. So you should take note of that. Now, clarity. Clarity is very important in any exam. Clarity is very important. You should space out your work number as you've been told and follow the instructions always endeavor to read the instructions there are five areas of the integrated science and you need to give attention to each all of the areas because you don't know which area could give you the max for you to hit your a so don't depend on these topics the reason why i mention these topics is because it's likely to drop and when you master these you will be able to solve some of the full questions you have been asked and also focus on learning the diagrams and labeling the parts because every integrated science exam you always have practicals and you always have diagrams from agri agriculture biology physics and chemistry you always have diagrams congratulations for watching the video to this part i'll urge you to take action you've seen of learned so much by watching the video to this far now i want you to help to motivate other colleagues also who are going to take their integrated science YEC exams i want you to post a comment what new thing you have learned and what you are going to apply so that others can read and also be motivated so thank you for watching this video till the end i urge you to subscribe if you've not done so and I want you to anticipate i'm also going to make another video on likely questions for um, the west african senior school examination on um, core mathematics as well so just take note on that thank you very much for watching